All right, here's our next piece, and this is called an adopt figure or a portrait portrait figure. And notice the spelling, it's N-D-O-P. And this one is of King Mishi Mi Shuang Ma Mabul. Yeah. It comes from the Kuba peoples, which is currently the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It dates between 1760 and 1780. CE and it's made out of wood and it is currently in the Brooklyn Museum in New York and um, any African um, section of a museum would have something similar to this in um, any major museum you would go to. Uh, I didn't see the exact one in the Met but they have these. Um, I, I saw several similar to this while I was there. Okay, so Nadat figures are commemorative portraits of Cuba rulers that are supposed to be presented in an ideal state. So it's not an actual physical representation, but it's supposed to reflect his spirit. Uh, these figures are rubbed with oil to protect it from insects. And there are several opinions. They vary about what is the actual function or use of the figures. Some sources state the figures were carved during the reign of each Niam, N-Y-I-M, and supposed to serve as the king's double during his absence. Um, the Nadop figures were believed to be kept in the chambers with his wives, who took this um, to be as if it were the king himself, and the, the figure in return would help provide with fertility. When the ruling king was close to death, his nadop was brought to his bedside in order to absorb his soul and vital force. Other sources state that the nadop was only carved after the death of the niam, N-Y-I-M again, and thus it encapsulates the deceased king's soul. The new niam slept in isolation with the deceased king's nadop to absorb his essence from his predecessors, Nadab. But what is generally agreed upon, however, is that Nadab figures are not exact representations of leaders in the past, but instead are supposed to be depictions of kingship. Each individual king's Nadab is distinguished only by his royal family emblem on the front of the figure. The figures were used to remind villagers about the power of the king and to welcome the newly crowned Niam into the community. It is believed that Niam Shyam Ambul Nagung introduced the practice of carving the dot figures in 1650, and he's titled the Nagal B Niam, meaning the eldest of the kings. This is one of the earliest of the African wood sculptures and the oldest nadop in existence. They are made from a heavy hard wood. They are roughly two feet tall and facing front with oversized heads and a very gentle expression. The eyes are usually closed with a relaxed mouth. The figure sits cross-legged on a square platform that is called a ying, Y-I-I-N-G, and it's carved with representation of a creeper vine. This is a representation of the dais upon which the king sits in state. In front of the king is a three-row board game, or a lele, L-E-L-E. -L -E. He holds a ceremonial knife in his left hand, and he wears distinctive projecting hoe-shaped headdress, decorated with carved cowrie shells, C-O-W-R-I-E, around the edge and an interlocking pattern known as a woot, W-O-O-T, on the top surface. Other key items of the regalia include the representation of a circular neck ring, cane shoulder hoops, a cloth plaque covering the buttocks, and a belt with three rows of cowrie shells. The relief surface have red camwa deposits. This king symbol is a drum with a severed hand. Uh, it's kept in the king's shrine with the other works called a set of royal charms, 
which has royal regalia, including bracelets, belts, and headdresses. These statues are seen as more political rather than religious. They're archival pieces which relate to the history of the kings and more specifically to the people among the Kuba. And uh, that's the Nadat figure.